You're watching Discipling the Nations broadcast, brought to you by the Fountain of Wisdom Ministries. This broadcast has been made possible by the prayers and support of our partners worldwide. Enjoy as Reverend Funke Wusho brings the Word of God for today. Hi, I'm Reverend Kolei Wusho. It's such a joy to be able to bring this broadcast to your home. And I'm glad that you are willing to connect and be involved with us. You're investing your time. The message you're about to listen to is going to bless you. I tell you what, God's word is loaded with his wisdom, with his knowledge, with his grace. And as you partake of this message, I believe your life will never be the same. So I want to prepare your heart and get ready to receive God's unadulterated word that can change things in your life. Call your friends and family and let's enjoy this together. I pray that God will speak to us in Jesus' name. There are practical things I'm going to share with you, actually. How do you sustain your prayer life? The first thing I'm going to say is that you must always, always enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You know, some people will say things like, oh, you know, oh, prayer can be boring. You know, I hear a lot of stuff. You know, but for me, thank God, either corporately or individually, you know, that has not been the experience. I've never conducted two prayer meetings the same way. Never. And so by the grace of God, I want to share the key with you. The keys with you. Is that okay? Yeah. Never. And there, it, the Bible says the mercies of God are new every morning. I mean, God is new every morning. God is always doing new things. He's always doing new things. You know, sometimes you're like, oh my God, there's prayer again tomorrow. I'm leading prayer again tomorrow. How will it be? How will it be? I hope... You see, God is always getting better and better. Amen. I mean, you led prayer today and it was powerful. And maybe tomorrow you're going to lead it again. You're going to lead prayer maybe even in a month. I tell you, you don't need to be scared if you understand this. Because what's going to happen is it's going to get better and better every day. That is the truth. Always enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Psalm 100 Verse 4, always. I want you to underline the word always. And I want to say this, that that is not necessarily singing songs. But always with thanksgiving. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I give you thanks. Lord, I give you praise. If you want to do it, if you want to you do that with words, you sing, whatever. You know, but you don't have to sing. But always. That's one major key. Always. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. That's in Psalm 22 verse 3. You know, Jesus was teaching them how to pray. said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. He started with what? That praise, hallowed be your name. Always come into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Gates represent what? The entry point. Give him thanks. Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to bless you. And the one thing I noticed is that every time I just start like that, before you say Jack Robinson, things are flowing. Amen. That is the truth. You know, there should be, shouldn't be any boredom in your prayer meetings, either at the personal level or corporate level. Always. In Psalm 50, verse 23, the Bible says, Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct, his conversation, or his lifestyle, aright, I will show the salvation of the Lord. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. The Bible says that Abraham grew st strong in faith as he gave glory to God. So always, you enter his gates with thanksgiving. Lord, I just want to give you thanks. Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. Lord, I just want to thank you. I thank you for your goodness in my life. I just want to thank you. If you're praying at a church level, God, I want to, you know, Paul said, I give thanks to God for you always. Lord, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for this church. I want to thank you for the people of this church. You don't start by complaining about the people. You don't start by your, with your problems. Just start, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Lord, I give you thanks. 
Thank you, Father, for today is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Lord, I just want to praise you. You are such a good God. You are a faithful God. I just bless you, Father God. I just bless you, Lord. And if you want to sing, you sing. You just bless him, you know, and just praise him. There are many psalms that talk about, you know, praising the Lord and all of that. So always enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. The second thing is that you must recognize, acknowledge, and welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit and his role. That's a major. Amen. Major. You must what? Recognize. You must acknowledge. The Bible says, acknowledge God in all your ways and he will what? Direct your path. You acknowledge him. Holy Spirit, I just want to acknowledge you. I just want to acknowledge you, Holy Spirit. I want to recognize your role. I want to acknowledge you. I want to welcome you. You welcome him. You acknowledge him. And all these things I'm talking about, they all spring first of all from your heart. Going back to, you know, uh, the issue of ignorance. That means you must, for you to recognize the role of the Holy Ghost, that you must not be ignorant about his role. You must know his role. You know, I really know his role. I don't know everything. I know his role and I appreciate his role. You know, there are some things that when you know certain things, it will not be a struggle for you to ask God for help. When you know how limited you are. You're not trying to show off. You're not trying to, to oh, this is how they say it, so let's say it like that, or this is how they do it. You just know that you need him. You recognize his role. You welcome him. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, we just recognize you. We acknowledge you. It says if you acknowledge God in all your ways, he will what? He will direct your path. You know, another, you know, in my marginal notes in the Bible, it says that place of you will direct your path. It also says he will make your path smooth. So if you want to have a smooth prayer meeting, <laughs> acknowledge him. Not a bumpy one. The one that by the time, you know, say one hour of prayer, after one hour you are like, is it one hour already? Not the one of... The <laughs> Bible says they go from strength to strength that appear in Zion. He will make smooth your path. You will not finish your prayer meeting and you look beaten down and beaten up. You look like you are ready to go on. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, like, where is the devil? Give me his head. I want to cut it off. Praise God. With that, I mean, with that recognition, acknowledgement, and welcoming of the presence and the role of the Holy Spirit, with that will flow, will come asking for his help. Like I said, what I'm saying is practical. It's basic. I'm talking about basic things. You know, one thing, I've said it before, Skill is a function of knowledge and experience. You do not develop skill overnight. And I do know something, skills can be developed in spiritual things. You can become a skillful worship leader. Like even if you are woken up from your sleep, you lead worship. Amen. I was saying to someone, I said, if you are supposed to lead worship and you are only to take two songs, and you're going to lead worship. What are you going to do? It takes skill. It takes understanding. There are some songs that you know that when you take one, by the time you take that one, you get into worship. By the time you, you, know, you just get into the second one. Then you don't start from some, you know, you know what I'm saying. You have got two songs and you're going to lead worship. Amen. And your job is to well, lead people into worship. So you have to develop skill. How do you develop skill again? Knowledge and experience. To be a skilled driver, you must be, have some experience. Is that not true? Yes. Knowledge and experience. So it's not something that whatever, if you're going to be a skilled prayer, warrior, whatever intercessor, it's going to come by two things, knowledge and experience. Experience means you've got to do the job. Some people have learned so much about praying. Everything is in their head. Do you know how to learn to pray? By praying. Pray. 
You know something? The more you pray, the more you know how not to pray. And how to do it. Praise the Lord. So you ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We acknowledge you. Holy Spirit, without you, I can do nothing. I need you. And you are not trying to say it because somebody said it. You are, through knowledge, you've come to know how limited you are and how much you need him. So you are sincere. And you are asking him to help you. But by my spirit, says the Lord. The Bible says, let's read very quickly. You know, don't worry because of time. It says, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. That's where knowledge is coming in now. You are not knowing such scriptures. No one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. That's what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, you must know your own limitation and that will help you to appreciate the role of the Holy Spirit. Write down 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and read it from verse 9 when you get home. This is going to refer to some scriptures there, but let's go on now. Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 says, We don't know what we should pray for as we ought to, as we ought, as we should. But the Spirit himself makes what? Intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. If you make the Holy Ghost your partner in intercession, you cannot miss it. Because he will help you. We make intercession for you according to God's will. So what do we do? We want to pray for the conference. We say, Holy Spirit, help us to pray according to God's will for the conference. You know the mind of God for the conference. You know what, the God, wants to, God, what God wants to accomplish in the conference. Holy Spirit will lean on you and we ask you to help us. Amen. And it has to be with your prayer point, your personal prayer point. Holy Spirit, you know God's will. You know the mind of God. And I ask you to help me. The Bible says that he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to the will of God, verse 28 now says, and we know that all things work together for good. You see, such spirit energized prayers always work together for good. Jesus calls him a helper. In John 14, verse 16, this will help you to deal with ignorance. These scriptures, okay? Like we heard when we're talking about avoiding ignorance, one of the things, one of the ways is that we must know what the word says. So I'm giving you some scriptures that will help you. Amen. John 14, verse 16, the Amplified Bible, he said, and I will ask the Father, Jesus was speaking, and he said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you for how long? Forever. Now I want us to take note of all those words. Those words were translated from the Greek word paraclete. It means helper, comforter, counselor. The Bible says counsel is like deep waters in the heart of man. But a man of understanding fetches it out. When you are in that place of prayer, you need counsel to flow. The counsel of God. Amen. He is the counselor. He is the helper. He will help you in the place of prayer. He will help you. He is the intercessor. You see, the Holy Ghost is the chief intercessor himself. Is the advocate. Is the strengthener. That's why you don't leave a prayer meeting looking beat up or beat down. He strengthens you. The Bible says that he came into the Garden of Eden. He, you know, the Bible says that he strengthened Jesus Christ. He will strengthen you. And he's a standby. Have you heard of standby generators before? Hmm? Some of you don't know. We know about it. A lot about it. You know, when power fails, when there's power cuts. So when your power fails, you have a standby. Glory to God. Can someone say, I've got a standby? <laughs> you have a standby generator. You know, those standby generators, they don't even wait for you to go and be putting something on and off. They just kick in. Amen. Here's a standby. Just imagine all those dimensions in your prayer life. Verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to heart. That's the word receive there. We talked about welcoming the Holy Spirit. The world cannot welcome him, but we welcome him. Amen. 
take note, like I said, of the different words translated from the Greek word paraclete and see how they affect your, you know, the, the role of, of the Holy Spirit in your prayer life, how each of those things really affect you. To sustain a, a life of prayer, your prayer life, always ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. How many times? Always. Always. You see, there must be a posture inside of you that recognizes that you need the Holy Ghost. It's an internal posture, first of all. That dependence on the Holy Ghost is something that is internal. It's not something that you try and, you know, feign. You must come to that place where you see how limited you are, how much you need him. Whatever you want to pray about, you do not know what to pray for. You may know you need a job, but you don't know all the things involved with that prayer point. You want to pray for your son who is traveling or whatever, but you don't know the details. And then you find yourself praying, and then you, have, you find yourself at some point binding the snow. And you're like, which snow? But the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hmm. Ask for his guidance, his counsel, his strength. Ask for his guidance. Ask for direction. You know, whenever we come together to pray, whenever I'm leading prayer meetings, I'm like, Holy Ghost, direct us. Just grant direction. We are here to pray for the conference. Grant direction. Direct, our, uh, direct how we're going to pray. Ask for direction. Don't come think. The Bible says you do not know what you should pray for as you ought. That does not mean you don't know your prayer point. It's one thing for you to know your prayer point, which might be prayer for your job, prayer for your daughter to have a baby, but you don't know what to pray for concerning that as you ought to. The Holy Ghost knows what is hindering the baby from coming. The Holy Ghost knows the intricate cases and the details that we call those things. You don't know. Is somebody listening to me? Ask for his guidance. Ask for direction. You don't know what to pray for as you ought I don't know what to pray for as I ought. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you have a need, you have a burden, but you don't know how to go about things. Is that not true? Why am I hitting a rock? I've been praying for a job. What's happening? He's a counselor. You might need counsel. John 16 verse 13, the Amplified Bible, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into... Oh, the truth. He will guide you. He will guide you. He will lead you. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He's going to lead you. You know, I always enjoy that leadership of the Holy Spirit. He is the, he is the, he is the chief prayer leader. Amen. Amen. He is the chief intercessor. He is the chief prayer leader. He is the chief worship leader. No one knows God as much as he does. You depend on him. For strength, for guidance, for direction. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. For he will not speak his own message. But he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come. The things that will happen in the future. Is that not true? Like I said now. Oh, you're praying, Lord, I just want to pray. I want to pray for, you know, for my daughter as she travels. I, want to, I just want to pray. I mean, there are times I've been praying for people. Maybe somebody is, you know, you know, calls me and says, please pray for me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, to the delivery world and all that. And I'm saying, yes, let's pray. And then I'm praying and I find myself saying things like, no, 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 no razor shall touch you. And I'm like, where did that come from? And then later they come out and they say that they almost operated on me, but praise God. He knows the future. He knows the future. He knows the future. He does. He does. You know, he, he, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank God for what? The Holy Ghost. And when you submit to his leadership in prayer, you will get results. You will get results. And like I, tell, like I said, it's a, it's a posture of your heart. He's not trying to be humble. You know, Jesus said, I, I can of my own self do nothing. When you know that as the truth, you don't try to be humble. <laughs> Amen. 
Now, when we say things like, I will see you tomorrow by God's grace, that God's grace can be a religious cliche, but it can be a reality to you. It depends on where you've been, what you've been, what you've seen in life. You know, when some of us say, by God's grace, <laughs> we mean it. Because you've gone through the valley of the shadow of death. You know that you sleep and wake up the next day is not compulsory. <laughs> it's a privilege. Amen. So when you say, by God's grace, amen. So you, you know, that's where knowledge is so powerful. You just know how limited you are and how limitless he is. He will announce those things to you. He will show you things to come. Jesus, God said something. He said, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and an expected end. He will, what's this? Glorify me. Honor and glorify me. Because he will take off that is receive, draw upon what is mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit to you. The Holy Ghost will transmit something from the heart of God to you. He will show you. Amen. I woke up this morning with a serious burden. I mean, in my heart, I was just praying. I actually woke up into prayer. Really praying, you know, for my brother-in-law. There was such a heavy burden. Heavy burden. I mean, it was serious, serious. So he would declare things to you. He would transmit things to you. And then one day, my, 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 my kids, you know, they were coming from school. And uh, I, was, I had a nap in the afternoon. And I dreamt. They were talking about whatever. And I said, I had a dream. As they walked in, it was Sam and, and KG. I said, I, I dreamt about you guys. I said, you were, you were, you know, talking about somebody inviting you to a party and all of that. And they started looking at themselves. And that was the discussion they were having. They were actually talking about how to come and announce it. <laughs> Amen. So you're not going. <laughs> but mom, I said, where is it? Where are they holding it? You're not going. He will reveal it to you. He will declare it to you. Sometimes it declares things, it shows us things about the future. If they are negative things, they are not for you to sit down and let them happen. They are for you to destroy, cancel, you know, you. And if you pray and the burden is not lifted, you carry on praying. You carry on praying. That burden must be lifted. Amen. And what normally happens to us is that when he even shows us things, we pray and then we declare that it is done. You don't declare that it is done. Like I told you, he's the chief intercessor. He lives on your inside. If he says the business is unfinished, it's unfinished. Now sometimes you leave church not because service has ended, but because time has come to go. So you carry the service on as you're going. Because there are things that God is doing in you. Sometimes a prayer meeting ends, but that prayer has not ended. Many times we leave church with unfinished business. And you have to carry it on. Because the intercessor lives on your inside. Is somebody listening to me? That is how to avoid boredom or cooling down in your prayer life. What we're talking about. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He said the Holy Ghost will transmit, will declare, will disclose, will reveal things. It will take things of mine and reveal them to you. You know, in the place of prayer, you are praying and you are, you know, he is revealing things to you. We must live by the proceeding word. Not the word that proceeded, but the word that proceeds. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty. The word mighty there means inaccessible or hidden or fenced in things which you do not know. You call on me, I will show you. I will show you things you don't know. I will show you things. 
to sustain your prayer life, to avo avoid having a dull and drab prayer life or prayer meeting, to keep the fire in your prayer life or your prayer meetings, there must be an absolute dependence on the Holy Spirit. You must keep your ears glued to God's mouth. And I will keep repeating this. It's about an internal posture, a posture of your heart. Don't come, you know, to prayer either at a personal level or corporate level with, you know, these are prayer points. Done, dusted, everything fixed. You come with an open mind. You come with your prayer points, but you still know that you don't know what to pray for as you ought. You know your prayer points. You know you've come to pray for the conference. I'm, saying don't have an, I'm not saying don't have an agenda. Lord, I want to pray for my daughter. Lord, I want to pray for my son. So you have an agenda. You have your prayer points. But come with an openness of heart for him to direct you, counsel you, lead you, move you in different directions. Are you listening to me concerning that prayer point? Because you don't know what to pray for as you ought to. That will take away all this drabness and whatever, you know, Prayer time will be a great time. You must have an attitude that wants to flow with the Holy Spirit in prayer. The Bible says the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. And this thing I'm talking about, apply to worship. Apply to Bible reading. Apply to anything in your spiritual life. It's the same principle. Is that okay? The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You've invested your time watching this and you're now listening to me and I want to ask God's blessing to rest upon your life. If you're here watching and you're not saved, as we pray, let the power of the Spirit of God do something on the inside of you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for every viewer. I ask you to do a thing in the life of everyone who is watching this. Lord, those who are not saved, let the confession of Jesus as Lord over their lives, let it bring transformation for them. Those who are having financial needs, Lord, meet them at the point of their needs. Those who are sick in their bodies, may the healing power of God flow through to them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And those who are expecting whatever area of breakthrough for their lives, Father, I ask you to do it in their lives. And I trust that you will do it because you say, whatever we ask the Father in the name of Jesus, you will do it. And so, Lord, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you will do something new in the heart and life of everyone who has watched this. And Lord, I thank you in advance. And I receive with joy answers to these prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Well, that's all we have for you today. But we hope you've enjoyed this message and have allowed God to truly touch your heart. If you have testimonies or you need prayers or would like to hear more messages, contact us via our website, www.fowm.org. See you next time.